Do you want to create a survey to measure how your audience truly feels about your business? With Likert Scales, you're one step closer to truly understanding your audience. This rating scale not only helps you measure people's opinions, but also their overall satisfaction levels. I'm Alex, and in today's video, we'll discuss how to create and analyze five-point Likert scales so you can collect better and more valuable feedback. Let's go. With Likert scales, your survey takers are given a handful of answer options to choose from. The options range from two positive choices, such as strongly agree and somewhat agree, to two negative options, like strongly disagree and somewhat disagree, with one neutral option. A Likert scale can provide your business with a number of benefits. They're easy to understand and navigate and don't require a ton of time to complete. Because of this, your participants will be more likely to complete them. Likert scales also produce useful, at-a-glance views of data distribution. Lastly, they take something like feelings and opinions and turn them into quantifiable data. Turning feelings and opinions into tangible data is vastly important when running a successful business. Creating a five-point Likert scale is a great option. Let's say you want to introduce employee exit interviews in the wake of a recent increase in employee turnover. You can wonder what's causing the increase or you can conduct a Likert scale survey to gain quantifiable data you can present in your next staff meeting. Specifically, when it comes to an exit interview survey, you'll want to include the following five aspects for respondents to rate. There's work-life balance, relationship with colleagues, relationship with management, salary, and work arrangement flexibility. You can always add in other aspects if you want a more granular survey. You can use JotForm's online form builder to create a similar Likert scale like this one here. Then, after you've conducted your survey and gathered your responses, you can assess which factor or factors most influenced an employee's decision to leave your company. When it comes to analyzing your Likert scale responses, you want to focus on the mode of your data. The mode is the value that appears the most often in your data set. You can do this by assigning a numerical value to your varying sentiment levels. Strongly influenced me to stay is one and strongly influenced me to leave is a five. With each answer being given a value, you can easily quantify how your respondents feel about each category in your survey. Let's continue with our exit interview scenario. Let's say you received answers from five employees. From these five employees, you'll gather a variety of numerical answers, like this set of numbers here for person one. With all your employees' responses on hand, you'll then multiply the number associated with each sentiment by the number of respondents who gave that answer. Here is an example of work-life balance responses and how to quantify them. You can see the numerical value given to the answer type the number of responses received for each answer type, and the total value for your responses. From there, you'll add up the total and divide that number by the total number of respondents to get your final sentiment score. In our example, you'll divide the score of 11 by the five employees who answer, which gives us an average sentiment score of 2.2 for work-life balance. Then, taking that number, compare it to your original value places for each answer type. The numerical value 2 means slightly influenced me to stay, so you can safely deduce that work-life balance is likely not your main focus as to why employee turnover has skyrocketed. Let's roleplay through the other four categories to complete our demonstration on exit interviews and employee turnover. For example's sake, let's say you deduced a sentiment score for the following areas. A 2.6 for employee relationships means your employees likely didn't leave because of their relationship with their colleagues. A 4 for relationship with management might indicate a possible pain point area worth exploring. A 4.4 for salary means you should do some research and see where your company's pay and benefits align with others in your industry. And a 4.8 for work arrangement flexibility could indicate a major push for turnover meaning it could be time to consider how to create a more adaptable and flexible workplace. 
The final step in quantifying your five-point Likert scale data is to total each category's average sentiment score for one final interview questionnaire score. You do this by totaling the sentiment scores and then dividing that number by the number of total categories. For our example, you'd end up with an average sentiment score for the entire employee exit interview questionnaire of 3.6. A 3.6 lands somewhere between neutral and slightly influenced me to leave. This answer means you're on the right track. The factors that you've asked about in your survey are indeed affecting employee turnover. If your overall sentiment score was a 1 or 2, however, you'd be out of luck as far as helpful information goes. The info you've asked about doesn't seem to have much effect on your employees leaving. On your next exit interview survey, then, you'd want to switch up your factors and see if you can better hone in on why your employees are leaving. Whether you're wanting to survey your students, employees, or community members, a five-point Likert scale survey will make your data collection and analysis a breeze. Quantifying data has never been more manageable and actionable than it is with the help of five-point Likert scales. Let's review. Five-point Likert scales provide a number of benefits. They're easy to understand and navigate. They don't require a lot of time to complete. They produce useful, at-a-glance views of data distribution, and they quantify important data like feelings and opinions. To analyze your survey responses, start by assigning a numerical value to each sentiment level. Then multiply the number associated with each sentiment by the number of respondents for each particular answer. After that, add up your totals and divide by the number of participants. This gives you a sentiment score for that specific survey question. You can then do the same process for your overall survey sentiment score. And there you have it. Until next time, I'm Alex with Jotform. Don't forget to click subscribe. Thanks for watching.